Hello, and welcome to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity. Subscribe to the channel to join me in exploring the enigmas of our distant ancestors and try to come to tentative conclusions about them. I am working on a video on the Great Void, which is a giant unknown space inside the Great Pyramid discovered by Muography. That's its own video. You'll subscribe and you'll get to see it. But because of its proximity to the Grand Gallery, it forced my script into a corner that I needed to explain my thoughts on the strange quirks of the Grand Gallery for any of it to make sense. That ballooned from four or five slides to a few dozen because it's a mini topic on its own, so that's what this is. There have been many theories laid out for the Grand Gallery and its purpose over the years. I won't go into them all, but let's take a look at some of them before I tell you what I see. Some suggest it could have been used as an internal construction ramp. And while this was probably so for workers and maybe water and small tools while the top was open, I don't think they dragged large stones up it, as the huge plug stones would have been in the way and there's nowhere else they could have stored them. Jean-Pierre Houdin suggested a counterweight system to drag the huge granite roofing stones to the king's chamber. This actually utilized the plug stones as a counterweight, but then you still need to reset by pulling the counterweight back up. D do you do so manually? This is before the invention of winches or pulleys. This makes no sense as you have to drag something up. I've seen plenty of alternative ideas that it was used as a pump, ramjet, or a siphon, but the pyramid is not even remotely airtight, and siphons simply don't work for heights over 33 feet. This is because siphons create low pressure, and it's the atmosphere pushing water into that low pressure area, that's how things get sucked up. The weight of the entire atmosphere weighs about the same as 33 feet of water, so it cannot push more than that. Adding more suction to the top just boils the water because you're creating a vacuum. I don't subscribe to any of these theories. In fact, I do not believe it had anything to do with construction at all. A lot of these theories are meant to explain some strange features of the gallery, but I think I can explain them all too, so let's take a look. When first entering the Grand Gallery, standing up from the narrow passage, Directly in front of you is the entrance to the Queen's Chamber. The picture on the left is taken from this position exactly, and the one on the right is taken from above the Queen's Chamber, looking back where you are. After immediately standing up, directly to your left is a modern staircase that aids you up to the King's Chamber, and to the right is a caged-off entrance to the Well Shaft, which I made my first video on, as well as a follow-up when I found some great new footage. In the path leading to the Queen's Chamber, there are these huge log holes. It is believed that they held sturdy logs, which held up a ramp that both concealed the Queen's Chamber slightly, but more importantly gave the plug stone something to slide across during their final plunge into the narrow passage. Behind you, there is a small hole on the top leading back the way you came. This was created by Howard Weiss with dynamite, and it's just a scar. It doesn't lead anywhere. At the top, to the left side, there is a hole in the corbel below the ceiling. This is a tunnel, believed to be carved by the builders themselves, in order to access the first relieving chamber. It's likely when the king's chamber ceiling cracked, they wanted to inspect it to see how bad the damage really was. Directly in front of the way to the king's chamber is a great tragedy. Called the Step by modern archaeologists, it marks the center point of the pyramid. But it was not a step, or at least probably not. This is how it was found, with a V-shape that looks very clearly designed to have a rope slot through it. This is, again, thought to be possibly construction-related. It's possible this was carved by looters, as this was the assumption the Ministry of Antiquities made when deciding to destroy all the evidence to make it easier for tourists, as opposed to, you know, building a wooden floor or something. Fucking stupid, if you ask me. 
Now on to the anomalies that I think people are really inventing solutions to. There are 28 notches along the floor, against the wall on each side of the gallery. 25 of them have corresponding notches in the wall, and they range from between 5 and 7 inches deep, and the ones in the wall are about 20 to 23 inches tall. Some of them have mortar in them, possibly from the original builders, but it seems that some of them have been mortared, then that mortar was chipped away slightly. No idea why or by who. On the third course, there is a groove on both sides, which has a huge amount of damage done to it. It almost appears as if something was mortared into place and then cut away. There are also various other small holes that we can't really be sure are original or maybe patchwork repairs that have fallen away, but they're most likely functional. We have to remember that the New Kingdom very likely was working and renovating this space. Many of the theories that I've talked about regarding the Grand Gallery utilize these notches in some way during construction, including the one by Houdan. And the most common interpretation from Egyptologists that I see is that these things held logs that simply held back the plug stones, allowing them to let them go very slowly. But I'm not sure why you would want to do that. They didn't do that in the Bent Pyramid satellite, which they constructed right before this one. So what conclusion did I come up with? I approached this looking at it from a different perspective, from its usage. We can't know, right now anyway, if it had secondary construction usage. But if we for certain know that one of its usages must have been that it was in the path of the funerary procession. Let's put ourselves in the position of one of the religious elders after Khufu has just died. We are going to be the ones giving him his final rituals in his burial chamber. We accompany the mummy down the tight passageway. All of these railings are modern, so in ancient Egypt, you'd simply brace yourselves on those walls. Now, we stand up in the Grand Gallery, though, and we're presented with a space much too wide to hold both walls. We're one of the religious elders, so almost by definition, we're advancing in age. That's a healthy explorer climbing up there on the left, but all of the old texts of visitors past claim that this is the most difficult part of the pyramid. It's often forgotten that this space must have been used as the path to inter the king. So what do I think these notches were designed to hold? Railings! Railings. Are you underwhelmed? Because that's Occam's razor. The ancient Egyptians didn't really have railings in the way we have them today, but they weren't ignorant of the idea of something to hold on to. These, as I'm showing you now, are by every definition a balustrade, and there are plenty of steep slopes we find all over Egypt where people have carved handholds into the side of the rock. I think the wooden scaffolding that Houdan came out with for his counterweight system probably is actually very similar to what the main structure was, as he did design it specifically to fit into all of the notches and the known holes. But instead of a counterweight, I propose simple vertical or slatted bars to grab onto. These wood aid workers climbing into the king's chamber during construction, but their primary purpose was to aid the funerary procession, some of which may be old and fragile, and some of whom may be literally carrying or dragging the mummy of the king himself. I mean, we put railings there because we found it so hard to climb. If you subscribe to History for Granite's idea that the tomb could be reopened and visited, that makes the need for something to hold on to even greater, as you're now using it more than once. I think it's likely that they would have then removed and reused most of the wood, this explains both the damage on the third corbel and why some of them are mortared and other holes are not. They likely gave up on mortaring due to time and just let the plug slide as soon as everything of value was removed. Though I suppose it's possible they left it and looters stole the wood too. Thank you for listening. 
respectfully discuss my ideas in the comments, or post your own thoughts about the weird quirks of the Grand Gallery or its uses. And subscribe if you wish to continue to join me in exploring the enigmas of our distant ancestors together.